NHK World. The dance form known as Nihon Buyo is one of Japan's traditional performing arts. Dance to the accompaniment of music and singing, the movements convey deep emotion. Nihon Buyo has a strong connection with the Kabuki theatre. Over the centuries, it has evolved a broad repertoire of expressive techniques. From the 17th century, Nihon Buyo spread widely in Japan. Practiced not only by professional dancers, but also by ordinary people. In recent years, there has been a growing revival of interest in this traditional dance as a way to promote health and well being. The history of Nihon Buyo dates back some 400 years to the performances of one woman. From that time, it flourished as a popular art form and caught on widely among ordinary people. Even as it became established as a traditional art form, it continued to spawn currents of innovation as well. On this edition of Begin Japanology, we examine the development and lasting appeal of Nihon Buyo. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. And this week's theme is Nihonbuyo, literally Japanese dancing. Nihonbuyo is one of Japan's classical performing arts, along with kabuki, no and kyogen, and the bunraku puppet theater. For many years, it's also been considered an important art to study uh, alongside things like tea ceremony and flower arrangement. Generally speaking, women have been in the forefront of keeping this tradition alive, but men also practice Nihonbuyo. Over the years, numerous schools, some people prefer to call them dance companies, have been established. There are five main ones which have nationwide organizations and a number of others, in total more than 200. Every dancer is affiliated with one particular school of dance. And with so many different schools, there are obviously wildly varying styles as well. But on our first video, we're going to look, take a look at the basic essentials of Nihonbuyo. Performances of Nihon Buyo portray dramatic scenes, often drawn from the repertoire of Kabuki or the No Theatre. Unlike other Japanese traditional performing arts, such as Kabuki, No and Kyogen, the performers rarely speak. Instead, they convey the story through their body movements. And whereas Kabuki is performed exclusively by men, most of whom are professionals, Nihon Buyo performers include many women, 90% of whom are amateurs. Broadly speaking, Nihon Buyo can be divided into three main categories. The first is Kabuki Buyo. This developed as part of the Kabuki tradition and incorporates Kabuki makeup, costumes, and set design. Many Kabuki Buyo works date from the Edo period from the 17th to the 19th centuries. This is also known as classical buyo. The second strand of Nihon buyo, known as suodori, has none of the extravagant makeup and costumes of kabuki buyo. Only simple props are used, such as a fan. Audiences must imagine the drama through the intricate movements of the dance. The third category is Sōsaku Buyo. Literally meaning original Buyo, this is a more recent development. While drawing on the basics of both Kabuki Buyo and Suodori, this approach emphasizes the narrative, 
drawing on original themes and choreography. Folding fans held in the hand are an essential prop for performers. Made from paper stretched across frames of bamboo or wood, these fans are opened and closed frequently during the course of the dance. In the world of Nihonbuyo, a fan can be used to represent many other objects. For example, held horizontally, the fan becomes a flute. Here it represents paper for writing a letter. And here it is a bow, snapping down to show the recoil after shooting an arrow. Now it's an umbrella. The dancer is sticking out her right hand to check if it's still raining. A fan can also be used in depicting various scenes. Here the dancer evokes Mount Fuji's classical conical shape. An undulating movement represents waves. Fluttering about like this, it's the falling blossoms. And emerging from behind the dancer's sleeve, it's the rising sun. Here a dancer pours sake from a flask for another person. Through delicate hand movements, and by changing direction, a single dancer can depict two or more people, bringing scenes vividly alive in the imagination of the audience. Here is one of the classic pieces from the repertoire of Nihon Buyo. It's a dance called The Dancing Girl at the Temple. It's basically a solo performance and lasts for about an hour. The story is about a woman named Hanako. It starts as she goes to visit a temple up in the mountains. Using her fan, she depicts a scene of cherry blossoms in full bloom. At the temple that she is visiting, the temple bell has been destroyed by a vindictive magical serpent. Now a new bell has finally been completed and consecrated. Hanako asks to see the new bell. Women are normally prohibited from entering the temple, but she's allowed inside on the condition that she performs a sacred dance as an offering. Hanako gathers up some cherry blossom petals. Forming them into a ball, she begins to dance. One of the features of this work is the series of dance movements originally intended for Onnagata, the female roles in kabuki plays. As Hanako dances, she appears to become more and more crazy. Seeing the change, the monks try to seize her, but they are moments too late. They have been outwitted by her sorcery. Then Hanako jumps inside the bell. It turns out that Hanako is actually the very same serpent that destroyed the original temple bell. The dancer portrays the fearsome serpent using the sleeves of her kimono. It's a piece that demands great powers of expression and highly developed dance skills. For that reason, it's considered the greatest work in the repertoire of Kabuki Buyo. Nihon Buyo has rules governing details of all of the different gestures. And to demonstrate some of those, I have in the studio with me today Mr. Nishikawa Kazumasa from the Nagoya Nishikawa School. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. First of all, can we go through some of the hand gestures, which are very important in Japanese dancing, yes. aren't they? 
Yes, hand is very important in our dance. Um, we just don't use it naturally, but we'll try to make it clean and beautiful uh -huh. and small. So we want to align our fingers together. And to make it small, our thumbs will be curled in like this, which uh, in Western dance, we, you can express more with the fingers. Uh -huh. uh, of course, a more uh, normal position is like this, but um, you, the dancers will use hands more more than the Japanese dancers. Right. Now, another part of the body mm -hmm. which is very important, no, not only in Japanese dance, but in Asian dance in general, I think, is the eyes. Yes. Um, eyes, well, uh, we, we can express a lot of things from where I look at. Uh -huh. In our type of dance, we don't use so much of face, face facial expressions. Uh -huh. Like even you know, we, we don't smile when we dance. We don't smile, and we don't we don't we don't show so much of expressions. And especially when you have that thick white makeup on right. for, for a performance, right, right. It's, uh, it, it's it's almost impossible it's, to yes, see. Yes, it's any almost difference. like a mask. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we want to express from the position of our uh, eyes. So if we look up, it's going to be happier if we look down it's going to be sadder uh -huh. and and if you look diagonally it's going to be more shy that's uh, a very typical woman's sort of expression yes isn't it? okay we're going to move on now to another piece of video uh, looking at what uh, what happens at a typical Nihonbyo lesson there is much more to Nihonbuyo than just elegant dance movements Equally important is the correct expression of etiquette and manners. Let's look inside a working Nihon Buyo studio. The room is covered with tatami mats. At the back, there is a stage made of planks of Japanese cypress wood. This is where dance lessons actually take place. The first lesson a new student learns is the proper way to wear a kimono. Usually dancers wear kimono in performances of Nihon Buyo. Unlike Western clothes, it is hard to put on a kimono without assistance. Learning how to dress yourself in a kimono is a fundamental skill required in Nihon Buyo. The next thing to learn is the proper etiquette before going on stage. The dancers must sit on their knees and make a formal seated bow, placing both hands in front of them. This interchange is a formal way of saying, I have the honor of dancing for you. It is spoken with deprecation, referring to the other person with great respect. Now the dancers give another bow to the teacher from the stage. Before you bow, make sure your back is straight. You must adopt the right posture before you bow. Next the students are drilled on the basics of deportment, how to stand, how to walk, and how to sit. While walking, the soles of the feet must glide softly along the floor. And when standing, the dancer must adopt a posture that appears attractive. These moves incorporate many elements of the way people are expected to comport themselves in everyday life. All these movements are of great value as basic elements of traditional Japanese manners. Teaching students to adopt an elegant posture and to move with poise is one of the key skills in Nihon Buyo.
As we've just seen, formal etiquette and deportment are essential elements of Nihonbuyo. And it's one reason that some parents send small children, some even as young as two years old, to learn it. Next, Nishikawa-san, can you demonstrate for us some of these movements that are in involved yes. in the etiquette? Okay. This is the way of sitting. Uh, it's called seiza. If you want to stand up from here, we do the movement like this. Now, if you can look from a side, uh -huh. um, the, the heel will be raised up and the toe is, is uh, pressing down. So you're putting ground. pressure on the ball of your foot. Right, uh -huh. exactly. And, and we press, give a pressure to the ground mm -hmm. and, and we pull up our bodies very slowly mm -hmm. like this and align our feet. And could that be either foot in front, the, the left or yes. the right? It doesn't it, matter. It, it doesn't matter. It okay. could be both. And we sit like this. The reverse process right. to sit down, making sure that you tuck your kimono under yes. your knee yes, as you do it. It's a nice manner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does look very refined, I must say. Yes. I want to pour sake in, in female role. Uh -huh. And I'll use my fan as a bottle of sake. Uh -huh. If you turn it down, it will be a bottle of sake. And we grab the neck of the bottle, mm. like this, and, and um, our fingers has to be lined up mm. nicely. And we pour sake, but we just don't pour like this. Uh -huh. we, it has to be nice and refined. And, and somehow it has to look... Uh -huh. I like, notice the way that one of the knees is slightly raised. Yes, yes. Yeah. In, in order, uh, uh, because I do this, uh, you see a lot of diagonal lines in here, uh -huh. which is more... Aesthetically pleasing? Yes, uh. sexier. Uh -huh. and, uh, and we use our shoulders. Uh -huh. um, if, if it's a male role, we can sit flat uh -huh. like this. It can be more rough like this. Okay. Uh, yeah. And this is more closer to the modern world, I guess. I, see, I think it is, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. On our next video, we're going to go back now and look at some of the history and the way that Nihonbuyo developed. Since ancient times, dancing has been associated with worship of the Japanese gods. Dances play a crucial role in ancient myths about the origins of Japan. In one myth, the sun deity Amaterasu Omikami is angered by the actions of the other gods and shuts herself inside a cave called Amanoiwato, plunging the world into darkness. There is no way for the other gods to force open the rock sealing the entrance to the cave. Instead, a female deity called Ameno Uzume is summoned to dance in front of the cave. Eager to watch the dance, Amaterasu peeks out. In this way, sunlight is restored to the world. Since time immemorial, dances have been an element in prayers and sacred offerings. Known as Kagura, this style of dance is performed at Shinto shrines all across the country. This is done as a prayer for bountiful harvests and other divine blessings. About 700 years ago, during the Kamakura period, a Buddhist monk called Ippen Shonin developed a new dance called Nembutsu Odori. It was a form of prayer to Amida, one of the manifestations of Buddha. This dance is accompanied by bells and invocations. The spectacle of the monks dancing and stamping their feet proved popular with the ordinary people. This Nembutsu Odori is thought to be the origin of Bon Odori. The dance is performed at the Midsummer Bon Festival in honor of departed ancestors. To this day, these dances are an essential element of summer in Japan. One of the pivotal figures in the development of Nihonbuyo emerged at the start of the Edo period 400 years ago. Called Izumo no Okuni, she appeared in Kyoto. She dressed in men's clothes and danced to the accompaniment of flute and drums. 
Pair dances are considered the starting point for Nihon Buyo as it is known today. Okuni's performances led to the creation of the Kabuki Theatre, in which dance was a central element. During the Edo period, Kabuki Buyo dance performances took place in special playhouses. These became a popular form of entertainment for the ordinary people. Complex choreography was developed for Kabuki Buyo, and many different styles arose. Members of the aristocracy and the samurai warrior caste began learning Kabuki Buyo dance to acquire aspects of court etiquette and took lessons with the master dancers. By the end of the Edo period, in the middle of the 19th century, Nihon Buyo had become widely established, along with the tea ceremony and flower arranging, as an area of study for women of culture. Japan rapidly embraced numerous aspects of Western culture, and by the early 20th century, Nihon Buyo was at a turning point. In 1904, the prominent playwright and Shakespeare scholar Tsubouchi Shoyo wrote an influential essay on theatre. He declared that Kabuki and Nihon Buyo should not be looked down on as low culture. Instead, he said, they should be considered as elevated as the opera and ballet in the West. After that, many dance masters devoted themselves to elevating Nihon Buyo to the realm of high culture. For example, this performance is based on an ink painting by the 15th century artist Seshu. Many different schools of Nihon Buyo appeared, and the world of Buyo became more structured. From mass entertainment to a refined performing art, Nihon Buyo has evolved, adapting and reinventing itself to keep abreast with the changing times right up to the present day. In the video we've seen, a contrast was drawn between high culture and low culture. The epitome of high culture in Japan was probably no theatre which grew out of the culture of the aristocracy and the ruling elite. In the 15th century, it was patronized by the Ashikaga shoguns and treasured by the warrior class. The prime example of low culture would be kabuki, which in its early days in the Edo period began life as a kind of street culture of the time. And during two and a half centuries of peace during Edo, where the urban merchants and artisans grew to prominence, it was their culture that flourished. And Nihonbuyo, because of its deep links with Kabuki, is strongly influenced by elements of that popular culture. Now, where this starts to change is in the second half of the 19th century, in the Meiji period. As we've already established, the term Nihonbuyo just means Japanese dancing. You might wonder why the Japanese would choose to use such a term. But what happened was in the Meiji period, as we saw in the video, there was a mass importation of Western ideas and culture. And it was to distinguish Japanese dancing from imported dancing like ballet that they coined the term Nihon Buyo. And then also, again, as we saw in the video, there was this one critical essay which urged a reappraisal of Kabuki and Nihon Buyo. And the two gradually came to be seen as high culture rather than low culture. Now, those traditions still continue to the present day. In addition, there are new styles of dance starting to emerge, and that's what we're going to take a look at next. In recent years, a fresh current has swept through the world of Nihon Buyo. This movement is known as Shin Buyo, the new Buyo. There are many types of Shin Buyo, and some of them derive from a fusion of traditional Nihon Buyo with elements from Western culture. This is a new work based on the Greek myth of Orpheus, the lyre player. As the story starts, Orpheus' wife has died, and he journeys to the underworld in an attempt to bring her back. This production features innovative stage design, including rotating mirrors that represent the boundary between this life and the other world. Borrowing elements not only from Western classics, but also from opera, ballet and contemporary music, 
Many new pieces are being created in the world of Nihon Buyo. Other people are starting to learn the dance movements for entirely different reasons. This is an exercise program based on Nihon Buyo, using the movements to promote health and well-being. The routine lasts approximately seven minutes. As the participants follow the dance movements, they alternately stretch, bend and hold fixed positions. This program was created by Nishikawa Ukon, the third master of the Nagoya Nishikawa School. Nishikawa undertook a scientific study of the movements used in Nihon Buyo in collaboration with a professor of biomechanics, Yuasa Kagemoto. They thoroughly analyzed all the dance movements to see which muscles were used. They used their findings to develop the exercise program, which is called Nihon Odori Sport Science, or NOS for short. People tend to use the outer muscles of the legs far more than the muscles on the inside. The goal of NOS is to consciously exercise muscles that aren't used so often. Fifteen years ago, Nishikawa was hospitalized for two months after a heart attack. After being discharged, he started a rehabilitation program of calisthenics and walking so that he could return to the stage. However, he made little progress. Nishikawa found there was no enjoyment in repeating the same exercises over and over again. So he decided to simply go back to practicing Nihon Buyo. Doing so, he naturally recovered his original physical fitness. Based on his own experience, Nishikawa saw the potential of using Nihon Buyo to promote well-being. Nishikawa also hopes that by linking Nihon Buyo with health, something that everyone's interested in, this could help to popularize the art. Nihon Buyo has a reputation of being hard to learn. I want to change that perception. As a high art, it's become too rarefied, and I want to bring it back to the ordinary people. I believe that Nihon Buyo can help everyone find harmony with other people. Traditional dancing was not something that people did for their health and relaxation. But with an aging population and an increasingly sedentary lifestyle, it could be that Nihon Buyo takes on a rather different role in modern Japan. On a personal note, my own wife does uh, Nihon Buyo too, and it's been really interesting to see how her awareness of Japanese traditional culture in general has changed as a result. And when she's practicing at home, I must say the muffled sound of a shamisen sounds very, very pleasant to me. Well, that's it for today. I'll see you again next time. Next time on Begin Japanology, we look at the abacus and its role over the generations in developing arithmetic skills among young Japanese.